What's up guys, I'm Irishelle and this is Too Deep. In other videos under this category, I went over the difference between Satan and Lucifer. We did that in the video entitled From Lucifer to Satan, as well as who and what Satan is, which is in the video called Beast of the Field. So in this video, I want to address who and what Lucifer is. I feel like there's really isn't a lot that we actually know about Lucifer since we have set aside past theories that he was the quiet director in heaven who rebelled and was thrown down to earth and then became Satan. We built this foundation in the video I mentioned earlier titled From Lucifer to Satan. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I would suggest you go watch that video first so that it'll be easier to follow this video. In that video, I explained that Lucifer was a star of some kind, and he was located in the second heaven, and his sin was that he tried to make himself like the Most High. So I want to play off these ideas for a little bit. First, I want to play off the idea that Lucifer is a star. Well, first we have to ask, what do stars look like? According to National Geographic, stars are huge celestial bodies made mostly of hydrogen, hydrogen and helium, that produce light and heat from the churning nuclear forges inside their cores. But as we discussed in From Lucifer to Satan, the stars are actually supernatural beings according to biblical scriptures. I know, I know, how can the Bible contradict science? Well, science is man-made and the Bible is God-breathed. We don't agree with everything science tells us if it does not line up exactly with scripture. We can't go based off of the premise that only certain parts of the Bible are meant to be taken literal and some are just fiction writing. Otherwise, anything that doesn't fit what we want could potentially be taught as fiction writing. So on our website, we hold, to, we hold the Bible as absolute literal truth. We believe that God really created everything around us in six literal days and rested on the seventh literal day. We believe angels came down to earth and slept with human women. We believe that demons are real and active in today's world. We believe that the stars are celestial supernatural beings that will be thrown down to earth and then judged on judgment day. Now, with all of that said, when attacking this idea that Lucifer is a star, it was quite challenging because the name Lucifer which is the Hebrew word Hillel, is only used once in the entire Bible. There's no actual legend on Lucifer other than that of the myth that he's Satan, which we went over in the other video. So that basically left me in quite the pickle. Because most people would be like, oh, well, we tried, but because I like to know everything, especially weird biblical things like this, I kept searching and searching until one day I got the idea that Lucifer is in the Bible as another name. All right, so let's unpack this real quick. We know Lucifer's sin was trying to make himself above the stars of heaven so he could be like the Most High, which was in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. Now, if we look at the very next verse, verse 15, God tells us his punishment. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. This is where it clicked for me. This is the only time we see an angelic being of some kind be thrown into the pit. So therefore, that must be where he is to this day. Because it never says that he's destroyed. It doesn't say that he is um, anywhere else. It just says that he's in the pit. So if we fast forward to the book of Revelation, we see that the pit is opened and an angel is released. Revelation 9, 11. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. So, what does this have to do with Lucifer? I thought he was a star. Are stars and angels the same? Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. First, Lucifer. Daystar, shining one, etc. That's the Hebrew word Hillel, which we don't actually know what it means. For instance, some say it could mean the planet Venus. 
Others say it could be the day star. Others say it could mean the morning star. But no matter what they say it means, all of them agree at least that it means shining one or light bearer. So according to these verses, the only thing we know is that he was somewhere in the second heaven and he tried to make himself above the most high, as well as he's now in the far reaches of the pit. So going based off of that, he could in fact be an angelic being of some kind, filling the position of the angel of the bottomless pit. Now this is where it ties back to Abaddon. If Lucifer is down there and only Abaddon comes out, then we have to assume that they are the same, otherwise what happened to Lucifer? So not only is their place of residence the same, but their personalities are the same as well. Isaiah 14 verse 12 tells us that Lucifer laid the nations low. In other words, he destroyed them. Revelation 9 11 tells us that the angel of the bottomless pit is named Abaddon and Napoleon, which means the destroyer. So not only that, Revelation 17 verse 8 says, the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. So there's no other angelic being that could fit the description was, is not, but is to come other than Lucifer. Now this is important because this is the reason that people marvel at the beast. So he would have to have made a name for himself in the past and it would have to be recorded somewhere in scripture. Now the only time that Abaddon, the word Abaddon is used in the Old Testament is as is referring to a place of destruction. It's never referring to an actual person. So we can't use those scriptures to be like, oh, that's Abaddon. So we have to keep looking. And Lucifer would be the only one who would fit that description. For instance, Lucifer was such, for lack of a better word, threat that God himself got off of his throne and threw him to, into the bottomless pit. And now there's no history about him other than those few verses in Isaiah chapter 14. Now, some could say that, well, he threw Satan to earth as well, but that's not actually factual. Revelation 12 tells us that Satan wasn't thrown down by God, but by Michael. Revelation 12, 7 verse 9. Now war rose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Not once is God even brought up in this. When he, when he, breaks, when he breaks into heaven starts a war it's all it's all on michael whereas when it comes to lucifer it implies that it was god who threw him into the pit it was it it, it implies that god was like no this is this isn't okay like you you ain't about to do this now the other thing to notice is that satan was only thrown to earth he was free to walk around. In fact, he was allowed to set his sights on attacking the saints, whereas Lucifer was thrown into the pit and kept there until the final days. So this is why I said threat, because Satan tried to murder the Son of God, led a full-on rebellion and war against heaven, and was only thrown down to the earth. Whereas Lucifer tried to be like the Most High and was thrown and locked away in the bottomless pit. Now, if we go now if we're going to say that Abaddon and Lucifer are the same, then we need to also take into consideration that Lucifer, Abaddon, and the destroyer are the same as well. For instance, in Exodus, we are we are introduced to an entity entity called the destroyer. Exodus 12 verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on 
the two doorsteps the Lord will pass over and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. The interesting thing about this that is that after Lucifer is thrown into the bottomless pit spoken of in Isaiah 14, the destroyer is no longer spoken of in present tense, but only referred to in the future during the end times or in the past tense, um, referring to the period between Exodus and Isaiah, but never anything else. So, could it then be that Lucifer, Abaddon, and the Destroyer are all the same person? Let us know what you think. Do you think the Destroyer, Lucifer, and Abaddon are the same, or do you think we're reaching on this one? Let us know in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, guys, God bless.